Now you notice I haven't used lots of religious words. I've spoken to you in psycholo psychological words, in words that says, yeah, I see that. Yeah, I see that. And if you're willing to see it, you're getting better as I talk. Because you are welcoming the man that's delivering it. See, if I'm a phony, it doesn't have the same effect. If I'm a real person and I can do this myself, and, I, and, and that, that I represent what I'm talking to you, then that representation plus the language can guide you to the same place. It awakens you to that place that you lost when you were a little boy. It's only an awakening of it. And then my job is done. Within a week or two, your post-traumatic stress disorder, your sicknesses are going away. And as long as the heartbeat of being re not being resentful, not being irritable, not being caught up with sweet, nice people who, who want to give you things, you have, the in you have the wisdom to see when a person gives you something, is he really giving it to you or is he taking you for a ride? I'll give you an example. Hare Krishna. A lady comes up, you know, they have these books they sell. Remember? You remember them in the, in the airports? They put a little flower in you and, and they talk to you and then the person walks away with a book they're never going to read. If you allow a person to give you something, even if it's a quarter of a cent flower, and you let them put it on your, la on your, on your lapel, you are obligated to, to that person. To the degree, one out of two people I watched bought a book. So if someone comes up to me, puts on the left the power. I said, why are you doing that? Is that free? Oh yes. I said, no, you're lying. It isn't free. You're giving this to me to obligate you by that book there. Are you mesmerized? Do you make a living? Is this how you make a living? By tricking people? You're in a cult. You know that, don't you? Bang! They drop the, the, the box and run. Cure it. Don't take a minute. I have to tell you another one, how simple it is. I'm, I, I, I don't care the, about the consequences, but I'm moved to do things sometimes. I'm sitting at the Empacadero. My wife was there, and she remembers this, I think, or she, I think she does. So the, <laughs> we're sitting with friends, and there's a little quartet that comes around with the music. And this woman is a brilliant violinist, absolutely beautiful. I had to say that. I said, very, very good. It's very delightful. You are a master of that. And she was, but she was a very suppressed person. And I only had a minute to help her. That minute. By, so I got, to her by, I got to her by compliment. And it was genuine. But so was the truth. I said, the problem is you're a suppressed person and you're and you're, and you're broken, and you're playing music because that's the only not love you don't know how to get. You're playing, playing music to be loved and to be appreciated. You can't live like that. You can still play your music. And she dropped the violin and ran right on the money. And I know, I, if she jumped in the lake, if she jumped in the lake, that wouldn't have bothered me. Because whatever you, you see, you've got to be truthful. And the truth is painful. 